This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. I'm back from my travels. I have a bit of a head cold, so hopefully you'll excuse my voice in this video. But I did want to cover the New York Times article that a lot of people have asked me to cover, which is an attack. It's really a hit piece on Bitcoin mining, and I'll link to it in the description notes below. As I said, this is a hit piece from the same newspaper that employs the quote unquote economist Paul Krugman, who had this famous prediction that by 2005, it will become clear that the internet's impact on the economy has been no greater than the fax machine. Seems like everyone at the New York Times hates Bitcoin. Paul Krugman himself has a long history of being wrong about Bitcoin. And yet this paper of record continues to dig in its heels. The New York Times is the same paper as Natalie Brunel here points out. It's the same paper that rejected the promise of airplane technology, early cars, space travel, and of course, the internet. They predicted a coming ice age in the 1970s, so we can forgive them for getting Bitcoin wrong. But this is a very, very misleading piece. And it's put out by a paper that uses 52 trucks to ship paper seven days a week that has the exact same content that can be read online as Ralph Raphael Shun points out in this tweet. This is also the same newspaper that doesn't seem to have a problem with pornography. I made a video a couple months back in which I pointed out that Bitcoin uses just 0.55% of global electricity while internet porn uses 3.5%. So if you're going to worry about energy usage, you have to uh, at least be consistent across industries. I've covered this again and again and again on this channel, so I'm going to link to a few videos that are apropos of this piece. But the fundamental question, does Bitcoin mining waste energy? No, it does not, because Bitcoin mining rigs are incredibly energy efficient and they continue to get more energy efficient over time. Bitcoin mining is a worthy use of energy because Bitcoin provides a unique form of neutral and ethical money that cannot be captured, controlled, debased, or censored. And this perhaps is one reason why New York Times journalists and the owners don't like Bitcoin because it's not something that they can control and they like the history that they've had of being able to control things. I'm going to link to a couple of videos in the description notes below how Bitcoin mining helps the electric grid, which is a good response to some of the allegations in this article, as well as this video about why Bitcoin mining is actually good for the environment, in which I talk about how Bitcoin miners can help to prevent the unnecessary venting or flaring of natural gas and landfill methane gas. If you're going to criticize Bitcoin mining, you have to come up with an alternative. We don't live in a perfect world. So Bitcoin is secured by proof of work. The US dollar is secured by proof of war, as we've covered many, many times. It was when Saddam Hussein started selling his crude oil for euros that he got attacked. Something similar happened in Libya to Gaddafi. So Bitcoin is secured by proof of work. The US dollar is ultimately secured by proof of of war. And so you have to ask yourself, if you don't like Bitcoin, but you do like fiat currencies, which is worse for the environment? Do ASICs, do Bitcoin mining rigs contribute more to carbon emissions than the US military? Does Bitcoin mining use more energy than the US military? So what is the New York Times solution to the problem of money if they don't like Bitcoin, if everyone on staff doesn't like Bitcoin? The answer is they don't have a solution. This is because this is a newspaper that's been controlled by the same family since 1896. And so ironically, they are the ultimate example of fiat privilege and first world privilege. And one of the problems with this article is it never even mentions why you might need Bitcoin and why Bitcoin might be helpful to disenfranchise people all over the world. I'll link to this video in which I talk about the Lebanese liquidity crisis and banking crisis as a perfect example of how Bitcoin can help real people. It's not just for speculation. It's not just for gambling. But I have to say that my biggest takeaway from this article is that it's a really, really bad idea for journalists, for newspapers, for the government, or for anyone else to be given the power to decide what is a worthy use of electricity and energy and what is not. And I would say to people like the authors of this article, don't politicize electricity unless you're prepared to allow it to be used against you as well. Should we cut off the electricity to data centers that we don't like? These tend to use a lot of electricity as well. Should we cut off the electricity to neighborhoods or even cities that are predominantly blue 
or read. I would also ask, is propaganda and misleading journalism a good use of electricity? Should we cut off electricity to the paper of record, to the New York Times, to the old gray lady herself? It looks like that they may have uh, doctored some of the drone footage. And I'll, I'll link to this thread in the description notes below. I would say if you're a Bitcoiner who still has a subscription to, to the New York Times, you're helping to fund Bitcoin FUD like this, as well as a lot of very bad reporting. I canceled my subscription to the New York Times back in 2001 because I thought it was becoming a very biased publication. And it's uh, hard to imagine how much worse, I could never have imagined how much worse it's gotten since then. So just consider this if you do have a subscription to the New York Times when they're running articles against Bitcoin and you're a Bitcoiner, you probably should not still have that. And I would say in general, if you're still relying on the New York Times or any main street, mainstream media for your mental maps or for neutral information, whether it's on the right or the left, I don't think you're going to make it in the 2020s. You've got to think through this stuff by yourself. You have to think through the incentives and what is driving articles like this, what is driving Bitcoin FUD. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comments section below. I'd also like to know how the audio of this video sounds apart from my voice. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.